Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Clara and today I'm going to be showing you how you can break those bad money spending habits and start feeling empowered in your financial life. As a disclaimer, personal finance is a personal matter. So the tips and advice that I'm gonna be sharing in this video is something that's come from personal experience. I am in no way a financial advisor, but I want to help share the simple things that work for me and hopefully these tips can help you as well. Tip number one. Bring awareness to your current financial situation, AKA review your bank statements. So although it may be tough, take the time to look at and really analyze your spending from the past few months. It's important to realize that the more that we bring awareness to our current financial situation, actually the easier it will become to change the narrative in our heads from constantly feeling inclined to overspend and overconsume to really being satisfied with purchasing within our means. So the action steps are number one, print out your last three months of bank statements. Take a look at the cost that incurred and really highlight all of the incoming and outgoing money in all your accounts and total up these amounts. So incoming versus outgoing money. Number two, subtract the amount you made from the amount you spent in that total given month to give you the total amount of monthly savings. Number three, distinguish between needs and wants by categorizing all these costs into essential, non-essential, and the what makes me happy category. So by essential, I may mean things like rent, gas, car, debt over 7% interest, things that we really need and that are essential for our everyday living pretty much are non-negotiables. The non-essential things, which may be going out shopping, going to grab a coffee rather than making it at home, things that are not really essential for you to live your everyday life. And the last category I like to call the makes me happy category, which are things that maybe are non-essential and you could live without, but things that you would rather not and that make you happy. So if you wanna grab a coffee every so often and that's what makes you happy, keep that cost in there. But it's up to your own judgment and really helps you see where your finances are at, see where you could maybe cut down those non-essential costs and it just really gives you a sense of perspective. So after you have these three lists dictated, you can take a look at what is in each category and retotal them to see the division of your monthly spendings. Number four, now that you've brought some awareness to the areas where you may be overspending, you can begin to make a plan or budget for how much you want to spend in that area. So an app that I actually like to use is called Mint. I really like it because it's a free platform and it just helps you track see where your money is going and to what categories so you can kind of keep track on the daily rather than looking at it over the past month or few months. Tip number two, create a budget. I know this sounds cliche, but let me tell you, it actually works. After taking a look at your current financial situation in the first exercise, you would have seen the areas in which are necessary expenses and everyday ones that you cannot cut out. And you probably noticed many areas where you overspent where you actually don't really need to. So in this case, cut the necessary expenses to enable you to reach your goals faster. And this can be a weekly budget, a monthly budget, whatever works for you. But as long as you are setting short-term savings goals for yourself, it really allows you to stay on track towards saving for bigger goals that may be enabled by the money saved from these bad money saving habits that we've all become so accustomed to and they're honestly normalized in today's society. So if you choose the monthly budget, one thing that you can do is give yourself a weekly allowance by looking at your budget and seeing what you can afford to spend each week so you can enjoy the money guilt-free. Just remember that once your weekly budget is spent, the spending stops. Really keeping that weekly budget along the way allows me to pinpoint whether I'm overspending or underspending so I can really keep track. And by the end of the month, I'm not like, whoa, where did my money go? Tip number three, physically record your spendings. Now this has been a game changer for me. It's something that can be done daily, weekly, 
monthly and in any amount of detail that works for you. For example, for myself and my husband, we really like to keep a book in the entryway of our home where we record our spendings at the end of each day. This can be a little excessive for a lot of people, but for us, we found that it really works to keep the costs low and keep ourselves aware of them. And by writing them down in front of you after each day, it makes you aware of what you're spending and inspires us to save more to bring us closer to our bigger goals. So after each purchase we make throughout the day, we either text the amount spent to one another or keep it on a note on our phone or simply just keep the receipt. And as soon as we walk in the door, we just take a couple minutes, write it down in our book, add up the costs to really enable us to physically see the amount that we spent that day to really keep us on track. We find that this is a really helpful way to continually bring awareness to what we're spending each day. And I find it really helps me stay more conscious of my spendings as I proceed throughout the week so I can stick to my weekly, daily, or monthly budget more easily. Tip number four, use a cash only system. If you've already completed the exercises above, you may have noticed how easy it is to overspend, especially when using a credit card and maybe even the credit card debt you may carry with you each month. If this is the case for you, try leaving your credit card at home and stick to only using cash or debit cards for all of your purchases. It's so easy these days with all of the online purchases hooked up to our credit cards like Amazon and the accessibility accessibility to contactless pay options like Apple Pay and so many other platforms that encourage us to spend more and enable us to do it easier than ever. Using this method also allows us to dismiss the spending we make on a daily basis, making us even less aware of our spending. So the more we use those credit cards and are a little less aware, the more that we are encouraged to have those bad money habits prevail. Tip number five, get rid of the shopping cart. Now this sounds crazy, but when you go on your next shopping trip, try to actually leave the cart at the door and pick up a basket or even no basket at all. Shopping carts are actually designed to make shopping easier for you, which encourages you to buy more and just simply keep you constantly throwing things in your cart, even when you don't really need it. When have we not walked into Target only wanting one thing and coming out with a whole cart of things? Try to avoid this spending trap and only take on a cart when you have a list of exact items that you need to purchase and use your list to stick to only buying what you need and not what you want or what is simply on sale. We've all been there and done that and bought things that we don't need just because it is simply on sale. So allow this method to stop the temptation of buying more and it will not only save you money but it will also save you time in the store as well. Tip number six, find your why. I actually probably should have mentioned this first but take your time to figure out why you want to break these bad money spending habits. It's so easy to get caught in the financial overwhelm when you are not clear on why you actually need to save in the first place. So by determining your why, you really create a strong attachment to your goal, which allows you to stay inspired to save along the way. Whether it's to help save for your family, your future family, your first home, car, a vacation or lifestyle you've always wanted, Find your why and allow that to be your inspiration and empower you to take control of your finances and find the strength to start spending more intentionally with purpose and pleasure rather than just for the sake of purchasing to accumulate status or fall into the over consumer trap. I found that the more I focused on what money can do for me and how it can empower me to live the life I've dreamed of living, the easier and more exciting it has become to save and watch my financial goals actually come to fruition. I hope these tips helped inspire you to begin breaking those bad money spending habits and start saving towards those big goals that you've always dreamed of achieving because you can do it. Drop in the comments below what your worst money spending habit is. Mine definitely used to be not checking my bank account ever. So if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos on minimalism, mindset, and saving money to come. Let me know how you love this video in the comments and I will see you guys later. Bye.